This is Booking It to Financial Freedom, show number 20. You have to maintain, you have to nurture, and you have to take care of all aspects of your life. You can't just neglect everything and Mm -hmm. expect things to work out. I try to do the multitasking where I'm focusing and then I get a message and I respond. And through this book, it's just taught me that you're wasting 20 to 30% of your day trying to switch back and forth. For years, I struggled with writing down my goals Mm -hmm. because I was like, but what if, but what if I don't reach this? Is that really what my life looks like? Mm -hmm. End of day, my one thing is, is my kid, Mm -hmm. you know? We can go rebuild a business, yet can't, we can't can't get the time back. Time back you know? no. Welcome to Booking It to Financial Freedom, where we explore literature from some of the most successful experts in their field to help you build a blueprint for personal growth and financial freedom. Join us as we examine a new book every month and break down key concepts to help you get out of the rat race and on track to start building a life better than you ever imagined. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Amanda Schneider, realtor and investor, and I'm here with my co-host and teammate, Jamie Booth. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Amanda. Oh, man, what a what a great show we had here today. Yeah. Uh, we had a very special guest, Casey yep. Clark, which is the employing broker for our brokerage, Keller William Partner here in Colorado Springs. Um, yeah. It was a, a great show. I think people are really going to enjoy it. Yeah, Casey's... She's kind of, um, I mean, I guess I would call her a mentor, but she's, she's where I want to be. And she's yeah. a lot of the reason why I joined Keller Williams Partners. And we do talk a little bit, disclaimer, about uh, the brokerage and how highly we think of it. I just want to put that out there that obviously we don't think everyone <laughs> needs to be of Keller of Williams. Those hater, all those KW haters are going to be like, look at those tea EXP. drinkers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Casey, I mean, she didn't really share much of her backstory, but I just, I know her personally and I know she had a bit of a hard time when she was growing up, but the level of excess, success that she has achieved um, is just amazing. She, you know, like you said, she's an employing broker of Keller Williams Partners. Um I'll just go ahead and read her bio so everyone kind of sees where she's at. But yeah. um, So Casey Clark is an employing broker and investor at Keller Williams Partners in Colorado Springs. She's also an investor of Keller Williams Freedom and Keller Williams Broadmoor, which is two other brokerages here in Colorado Springs. She's a former um, Keller Williams Black Belt team leader and also the founder of the Team Colorado, which is a top producing real estate team in Colorado Springs. Casey dreamed of becoming a realtor at a very early age and got her license at age 24. She graduated from college with a degree in finance and a minor in marketing, and she's dedicated to educating and empowering realtors and clients because she believes that the best decisions are informed ones. And a lot of the reason why I wanted to have Casey on today is um, she lives and breathes the one thing. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people tease us in Keller Williams that we're drinking the Kool-Aid, and I get it. But what's so great about Keller Williams is we do have a lot of blueprint books that show you how to be successful and the one thing is great because it doesn't have anything to do with real estate. Yeah. It's how to be successful in well, business. Well, ag- again, back to the reason why we started this uh, podcast to begin with is these these books are very powerful tools yes, to accelerate your you know your personal uh, business success, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the concentration information in all these books are are amazing, and like you said, um, yeah, we, we we do talk a lot about real estate uh, in this episode, but you know. This book will help anyone out. I don't mm-hmm. care what you do for a living or what your career is. It's yeah. a it's an amazing, powerful book. And it's cool to see how Casey implements it basically in her day to day. Well, in her day to day, I would say with a pretty pretty high amount of certainty that she practices this day in and day out. And uh to see how successful she is 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 gotta be an inspiration for a, a lot of People in general, especially women, uh, it's Absolutely. a it's amazing to see what she's uh, she's accomplished and built, um, regardless of her background. So, yeah, for all those people out there who have you know, you know may have had a a, a rough upbringing, you know, uh, the sky's the limit. Think mm-hmm. big, right? We talk about in this book, other books. Think big, set big goals. You know, implement some of these practices that you find in these books, and the sky's the limit. Yeah, one thing. That was a great takeaway for me is that Casey said that she really tries to cut her workday off in her driveway. Mm. So she pulls into her driveway. She answers all of her emails and her texts that have to do with work before going inside because she's a single mom with a 16 year old boy and he is her one thing Mm -hmm. above all things. And so that time at home is dedicated to him. And I just, I thought that was amazing because even with being a single mother for the last 18 years or however long, I'm sorry, 16 years, 
all of the things she has achieved in addition to that. Mm -hmm. And she's an amazing mother. Like it's so inspirational. Absolutely. So awesome. Should we go ahead and bring her on? Yeah, let's get her on the show. Okay. Hey, Casey, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we're really excited. Awesome to have you here. Yeah. Um, We read your bio already, but can you kind of just give us a little bit about, tell us about yourself and kind of the different things you have your hands in because it's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) It's not really a lot when you focus on the one thing. True. (laughs) That's why you're here. (laughs) That's why we're here. Yet sometimes you you do get into that overwhelming focus or piece of life and then you figure out, you go back to the book yet about my path of real estate. Yeah. I started, I graduated college, came straight into the industry. It was a little difficult. I had my first couple years that I really sucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you were young too yeah. when you first yeah. got your license. So. Yeah. Just, yeah, very young. Yeah. And Still trying to figure a lot of things out at that point. Very, very much Much less so. a real estate business. Yeah. My awakening moment was having Brixton. Yeah. Of, oh my goodness. Like my son, my my family, my life, we deserve more than the work that I'm putting into the business. Mm-hmm. So that was a very big, and he's been such a defining moment of a lot of pieces of my life and career. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, can you kind of, and maybe you don't even know, but kind of what was the progression of you, you know, being a real estate agent and now you're our employing broker at Keller Williams Partners, you're part, you know, you've got interest in a lot of different brokerages. Like how did that all transpire? It all, going back to the history of sitting on my gray aunt's lap, that story that we've yeah. seen a couple places. Yeah. Um, and then just like, what's next? What's next for the people that, the agents that are within my community? Um, what's next for my family as well? Mm-hmm. And what, what do I, what legacy do I get to leave behind? Right. You know, uh, years ago, Ed has always shared of when he's gone, that his people that would walk up to his daughters and say, your dad changed my life. And so I've pretty much ripped off his statement is that when, yeah. um, when I'm gone, that people will walk up to Brixton and be able to say that your mom helped change my life. Right. And, you know, just a disclaimer, we all obviously are with Keller Williams partners. So mm-hmm. I think we're all a bit, you know, partial to Keller Williams. But do you think a lot of it is the philosophy that Keller Williams teaches of, you know, you do this and then this is your next step and then this is what, and, and part of their philosophy is leaving a legacy, yeah. correct? Correct. Yeah. So and Truly, and that was, and don't quote me on years, but that was actually added in the last seven, eight years of the legacy part. And even though I feel we were already all practicing it prior mm-hmm. to, um, of just the company being pretty amazing of putting it in writing of this is, this is, these are our values. Right. Yeah. So again, not trying to, you know, if anyone's a real estate agent out there, not trying to sway you to come to Keller Williams, but that was definitely part of the reason why I came is because of this, they care about their agents and educating them how to build their business and how to take it to the next level and continue to grow. And <laughs> I'm just wondering how many EXPers out right. there are going to watch yeah. this and be like, like I'm next. done with this podcast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it absolutely has no, yeah. um, it has nothing to do with which brokerage you should be with, yeah. but just that philosophy was really important to me. Um, and just to bring it all around, Gary Keller, who is the author of the one thing is who started Keller Williams. So mm-hmm. That's part of why we wanted to have you here is because that's a lot of what you teach your other agents that you're mentoring is a lot about the one thing. Yes. So, yeah. Do you remember kind of when you first read the one thing or when? I know that that was within the first two years of it being written. Yeah. And I don't remember the exact time frame. So we're in its 10 year anniversary. That's right. So you congratulations, Gary Keller, Jay Papazan mm-hmm. for writing such an amazing book that we see everywhere and that's changed and helped people so much within yeah. their life. Businesses. I actually read the book about the time it came out too. Yeah. I was in England at the time in the air force mm-hmm. and, uh, it was, it was kind of the hot topic for a little while in my squadron. Yeah. All of the leadership were trying to implement it. It was, a uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And then here I am all these years later working for KW. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my understanding that was actually the intent of this book. So we have the MREA shift and we have the, uh, Gary and Jay have written so many other books, but that was the intent of this was to go, outside of real estate yes. into the military into Fortune oh, yeah. 500 companies of such a great all of the superintendents strategy. and officers were like I'm locking my door I'm doing the whammy one thing for the yeah. day like yeah. it, it was definitely it definitely has reach yeah I well, still buy the little doorknob things yeah if you guys need any have a okay. bunch of them at the office <laughs> <laughs> to let people know you're yeah. doing your one thing yes. okay perfect <laughs> no that's what's so great about this book though is because he kind of 
um, he doesn't talk about real estate specific. Us, of course, knowing a bit of his background, I know what he's talking about. But if you're not into real estate, you're not an agent that has nothing to do with this book. Like you will not be turned off by reading this book because it, he doesn't mention real estate at all. No. It's really the big picture of. I, I completely 100% with every fiber of my being believe that every single person on this mm-hmm. planet could benefit from, benefit from this book. Yeah, yeah. You probably didn't even realize that who Gary Keller was when you first. Oh, I had no right. idea. Yeah. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. I love it. And thank you. I didn't even know who he was until, (laughs) thank you. you. Uh, Didn't know who he was until I was like trying to get my license and trying to decide which brokerage I was going to work for. For sure. Um, And can you maybe, I don't know, kind of give us, this might be a tough question, but how has it changed your life? Like what has it done for you and maybe changed your coaching to focus on that one thing? (laughs) <laughs> it, it's a very broad that's, that's a very broad question. Yeah. There's so many principles like within the book, like if you go to the website and you see the someday goals, the GPS, aka one three five and the four one one, um, those have been constant three page business page or business plan mm-hmm. that that I've implemented and worked with all of the agents on of like very first one is let's see your someday goals. Yeah. You know, and then that goes into your one three five and your four one one. Can you explain and, those just for people that don't know? Like um, the one three five, the four one one. They are so your someday goals is like let's dream. Here's what we want to do in one year, five years, and someday. Mm-hmm. So not only on the top part of it is your personal, and a lot of times I'll meet with top agents, and I'm like, I don't even want to see the business part yet. Let me see what you want your life to look like, mm-hmm. and then in our in our next consultations we go into okay, let's let's go into what the business looks like. And then the GPS is people can use that however they want. That's your one, your one thing. Mm-hmm. Like, is that based on how much money you want to make? How many, you know, do you want to build a brokerage? Do you want to build a company? Like these tools are not just geared towards, towards us as real mm-hmm. estate professionals. Mm-hmm. I always tell other business owners, I'm like, go get these books. This mm-hmm. is the recipe. The MREA is a recipe for building any type of business. So the MREA is the uh, Millionaire Real Estate Agent. agent, correct. And yeah. then there's also mil- Millionaire Real Estate a- investor. investor. Yes. Yeah. So those are great books. And as the, well. they're just recipes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so Blueprints. the one thing I feel comes in of this is actually how we break down those books mm-hmm. and put it down into the three pieces of paper to actually make it happen. This is the thing I love about this podcast and what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to get, you know, trying to give people information, nuggets, whatever it is to motivate them to go find financial freedom from themselves. But the other thing, I think it was actually, it may have been in one thing or I was listening to it or something else. They were talking about how, how powerful books are, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes these books takes someone 10 years of their life to compile all of this information in one little condensed place. Mm-hmm. That's why these things are so powerful. It's like, you're not going to find it, that that concentration of information and uh, knowledge in any one place, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's amazing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, anybody out there can go find these books and find benefit out of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is the 135 and the 411, is that, that's on the One Thing website? Yes. Or I just know it from our brokerage. Yeah. So it's not, it's not real estate specific. It's yes. something anyone so can So under, grab. on their website, under free resources mm, are okay. all of those tools. There's even amazing, there's couples retreats, there's business mm-hmm. coaching that is for all businesses that it's just an amazing resource. Yeah. The couples retreat. I always tease. Um, yeah, I need to get signed up for it because I always thought you had to have like a couple. Yeah. And I was looking for like a rent a husband. Yeah. Brian and Tiffany Canada had actually have gone a few times and they shared, no Casey, you don't have to like be married. You can take your business partner oh, or yeah. something like that. That'd I was like, great. okay, now I, now I have to get that on my list. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. So like the 411 and stuff, it basically helps you. What is the one thing today, this week, this month, month this year exactly right? yeah which I found when I first started with the brokerage two years ago I was like I don't I, <laughs> I don't even know where to start you know yes. but reading this book really helps you focus on it and I love how he kind of breaks it down into different pillars because I think people have a misconception it's not the one thing the one and only thing in my day that I'm going to do it's the one thing in my family my spiritual life my you know fitness um, and my business and mm-hmm. asking ourselves all of that throughout the day yeah so did, so did you read the book before or after you joined KW, Amanda? Before, I think, but yeah. it had been a, a long time. And so I didn't really yeah. remember a lot of the principles. And then, you know, Casey presented the 411 and the yeah. 135 and stuff. And I was, I was just like, curious. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, 
do you have any insight? Cause I know you've met Gary Keller, obviously, mm-hmm. like you go to retreats and you like know him personally. Um, do you have any insight into like what inspired him to write this book? I'm just yeah. curious. Cause yeah. he talks about it a little yeah. bit, but yeah. yeah, he does kind of brush over yeah. that. Doesn't he? Besides yeah. what's in the book, I think what we had shared earlier was of how do we put all of these pieces together mm-hmm. and have some, a tool that his brilliant mind and Jay's mind that put together for everybody outside of real estate as well. Yeah. And then to give us as real estate professionals, the recipe of how to actually go in and implement all of the big ideas of the other books that have been written. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And I keep saying Gary Keller, but it is Jay Papazon too. So I don't want to like not give Jay any credit yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine Jay's used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, cause you work a lot now, a lot of your focus has uh, come, you know, obviously you're still helping people buy, sell real estate, but a lot of your focus is helping us agents grow our business. Yes. Um, so do you have kind of in your coaching clients, do you have something that you require them to do? Do you require them to do the 411, yes. the 135? Yes. Yeah. My very first one is, is the someday goals mm-hmm. because then we can really get, personal of like why are we even doing this right you know what what do you want to have happen and then Mm -hmm. your gps and some agents and because we have the 12 week work year some agents are using their gps aka the 135 as a quarterly business plan Mm -hmm. you know or what whatever they want the three pieces of paper can be used in so many different powerful ways yeah and then the 411 is your monthly accountability to stay on track to complete your quarterly or yearly goals. Mm -hmm. How does, what does that look like for you? Like, do you actually sit down at the beginning of the year and do all of that? And do you do it daily? Like, how do you keep yourself focused on that? So I do that and I'll be truly transparent here. I, for years, I struggled with writing down my goals Mm -hmm. because I was like, but what if, but what if I don't reach this? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I first started. Kind of a limiting belief. mm -hmm, Mm -hmm. Very much, Mm -hmm. very much of like, oh, and like, oh, I don't deserve this. Like, how could I be an owner of three different franchises? You know, and like that, is that really what my life looks like? Mm -hmm. And um, so when I first started writing out the GPS, I'd actually write it or my someday goals and my GPS, I'd write in pencil. Wow. So you can so change, change it. it. Yeah. Change it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, now it is in it pen and it is on the computer. So it's something that regularly getting up and looking at it. There's been times that I've screenshot it and put it as my on my phone as my background picture, mm-hmm. especially when I'm going through a season of of there's a I feel like there's a lot on my plate. Mm-hmm. So not only do I help my agents with it. Um, that and even H- agents outside of the company, like, we, I, I really don't care. How, how do we get help change our lives, the consumers' lives? Yeah. All of that. And you were falling victim to one of the lies big yeah. is bad. Yeah. 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 Yep. Not allowing yourself to dream big. Yeah. I feel like part of doing the one thing is knowing when to say no. And that is something that I struggle with. And I'm not quite sure how you do it because you are. Whenever I call you, you either answer the phone or you call me back. And I'm like, how does she have time to do all of this? Because I'm not the only agent calling you. You have your own business. You have brokerages to run. Like, how is that part of your one thing? Or just how do you structure your day to, to fit it all in? So I'm very time blocked. Okay. And then, and I struggle with saying no. And it's mm-hmm. a constant habit. And having a huge mentor in my life that is constantly saying, is that in your top 20%, Casey? And mm-hmm. I have, have a funny made up voice. Um, <laughs> I would that like to is hear constantly, that. <laughs> that's constantly um, reminding me of what am I doing. Yet some of my tips that I've done is like I will send out a text message if, like I if I know it's a broker on call phone call and mm-hmm. I know that I'm back to back and I think you've probably gotten that. Hey, mm-hmm. if it's an employee broker que- or managing yeah. broker question, please call the phone number or I'll get back to you. Yep. It'll be two hours or this evening. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll just send those quick text messages to protect what I'm focusing on at yeah. that time. And then just habits that I've built of I'll sit in my driveway to make make sure all of my text messages are answered. My phone calls are answered for that mm-hmm. day before I go inside so I can and get distracted by something yeah. else. Yep. And then I can focus on my one thing of my son Brixton, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm I'm done mm-hmm. with the work or Brixton's downstairs doing his homework. Okay, I can go in and pay attention to my phone or pick up what I 
didn't get done. Yeah. But it's very much com- putting together the pieces of like, okay, what what I need, what's my one thing right now, and not mm-hmm. not the multitasking. I really suck, and I never get anything completed. Yes. <laughs> if I use that mentality. Yeah, I think I don't know if it's covered in this book or other books, but as far as the time blocking, one of the things that people can do to help themselves. Um, uh, stay focused and, and not be interrupted is they talk about how, you know, like basically warn everybody, tell your, mm-hmm. even tell your yeah. family, like, Hey wife, Hey kids, I am going to be, you know, uh, knee deep in this work from eight to 10. Please don't bother me unless it's an emergency, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Or telling your coworkers or shutting your door and putting the little sign yeah. out there on the knob, like come back later unless it's, you know, a real fire or something like that. I think that's a great idea because that's what I struggle with is um, obviously as agents, we want to be responsive to our clients, but that doesn't mean they need a response in five minutes. You Mm -hmm. know, they need a response within a couple hours or within that day, depending on how critical it is. And so I get in the routine of immediately responding to them where it's like, it's better to time block where this is where I'm going to answer all my messages in my driveway. Or even, I don't know if it's possible to have an auto message sent out that just says like, I'm currently focusing. If it's an emergency, call me or something. But I feel like that would help me a lot because- I try to do the multitasking where I'm focusing and then I get a message and I respond. And through this book, it's just taught me that you're wasting 20 to 30% of your day trying to switch back and forth. And in the book, they talk about like putting your phone on silence. Mm -hmm. Like what is your focus time? Turn off your notifications. Yes. That's what I like about, (laughs) I'm an Apple nerd. So, but they have the focus, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, a feature on these phones and iPads and stuff now. So you put that on, like it it says, do not disturb. Casey's an Android. She wouldn't know. I know. (laughs) But my Android sends out scheduled text messages. Yeah, we don't have that. I would love that. Mm -hmm. That would help. I I love the scheduled text messages. For sure. (laughs) Let's not get into the Android versus Apple (laughs) debate. (laughs) This episode's going downhill real quick. Yes. Um, I want to get into the lies that Carrie talks about, but before we do that, I'm curious, what do you think, and this is totally like your opinion, maybe you know, what do you think Gary's focus is for Keller Williams? Do you think his one thing is the agents, the real estate transactions, or is it technology? Because I know we've talked about how it's a technology company, so I'm curious. So it always starts with the agents. Yeah. So what do the agents need? Yeah. With us being in the fourth industrial revolution with big data and AI, and there's There's huge threats on our industry. I mean, we're multi-billion. There's other multi-billion dollar industries that how are we helping our agents protect their data? Got it. And their consumers, Mm -hmm. you know. So it's always first and foremost on Gary Keller, I feel. Yes. And I know that he would probably say this too, of the agents are his consumer, Mm -hmm. you know. And that has led him to develop some of the different technologies we have because, I mean, we have our own CRM. We have a lot of technologies that I'm not sure some other brokerages have, you know, that we don't pay extra for. It's all just part of it. So I was just curious about that. But that makes complete sense. That's the one thing. And he's meeting that need. Giving the agents all the tools to be the best that they possibly can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so we talked about it. He has a, a list of six things he calls the lies. One of them that I think is really hits for me is that everything matters equally. And we talked about that, how you time block, but anything else that you do to, cause everything doesn't matter equally to decide what a priority is. What do I do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like just, <laughs> yeah. Is there any tips that you have of, I mean, like, you know, I think, is this, is this a lawsuit? For being the employee broker, I think there's those pieces in, mm. okay, what, what is the, what's pulling me away? Yeah. Um, so it depends on the fire level for me yeah. of what is most important of what I have to get back to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, we kind of talked about this in, uh, one of the prior episodes about how, you know, your, your one thing can change from day to day. Yeah. 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 Um, and then you focus on what's most important to get through the, you know, that particular day. It doesn't have to be the same thing day in and day out. I think that's what I struggle with though, is that you, you read this book and it feels like, oh, that should be easy. I'm going to wake up. It's going to be a one thing. That's what I'm going to do. But then in your case, you have somebody who has a lawsuit or somebody who's having a terrible transaction that it has to be figured out now. It's like people have terrible transactions. (laughs) No, it's never happened to me. No. But it's just got to be a little frustrating because I guess you just have to know that you have to be fluid in your one thing, mm-hmm. I suppose. Yeah. yeah and just like, uh, you know, 
and we were talking um, before, you know, you, you have to live in that extreme. So whatever that one thing is, 100% focus, yeah. you know, all in on whatever that one thing is for that day or, you know, whatever the one thing looks like for you until you've accomplished that task. Yeah. That and you have to be okay with hurting feelings because there's times that I will say, hey, this is your point of contact. That's the best person to be talking to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's times in my day that, no, but I want to talk to Casey. I, I want to, and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I have these appointments. Yeah. I need you to talk to Anastasia. I need you to talk to Bo or Savannah or Annika. Mm -hmm. You know, that, it, and sometimes, yeah. Well, sometimes you have to say no, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. we were saying. Like, um, you know, sometimes you have to focus on what's most important and then, you know, if it's if that person really needs to follow up with you or talk to you about something, they can, you know, they can schedule something for later or whatnot. Well, yeah. I think part of that, too, is just realizing that, like, us as individuals, yes, we're amazing. But if we provide the right resources for people, it doesn't have to be us. Because I struggle with that, too, of, like, now that I have a team and I have some a referral to me, it's like, well, they were referred to me. Can I give them off to? But I can if I set it up right and I you know, do the, the handoff, et cetera. And I talk about how awesome Jamie is. Like it all works and just kind of getting out of our own ways and knowing yes. that we don't have to do all of it. hundred percent. All he give me is hoarder houses. I know. <laughs> that was your own lead. <laughs> it's a hoarder house. That sounds really fun. Yeah. Um, okay. So the other thing he talks about is um, another lie is having a balanced life. And this was like a total aha for me because in society we're constantly trying to talk about work-life balance and how everything should be in alignment. And it's just, it's yeah. impossible. It's funny how it's so mainstream yet. Mm -hmm. So impossible, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like a false advertising. Yeah. So he instead talks about counterbalancing where basically you may need to give all of your focus to one thing, whether that's work for a bit, but then you can, you can finish that task and the keyword is finishing it so that you can come back to the middle and now you're spending more time with your family, et cetera. Do you experience that kind of in your own life? And how does that work with your family, making sure you have enough time for them? That is so much of why I sent my driveway mm -hmm. before I go into the yeah. house. Yeah, you know, So sense. years ago, Brixton hid my phone mm -hmm. while we were supposed to be watching a movie. And there's times that he'll constantly, he'll remind me of, hey, mom, like, can you put your phone down? You know, and I think he's off doing playing games or his homework or, you know, yeah. and he's like, mom, can you just put it down? So yeah. he's my constant reminder of what is my one thing, you know? That's great. And then he bugs. Like last night I was trying to actually get some work done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so he comes in and starts messing with my phone. I'm like, son, I have to get my thing done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the, on that topic, I think it's funny that the, the juggling analogy was used a couple of different times in this book. Mm -hmm. And the first example was used on, how multitasking is is false, right? It's mm -hmm. not a real thing because as you're juggling, you're only concentrating on one ball at a time. But then when he's talking about the balance part, he uses the we talked about in the, uh, one awesome. of the, uh, the last episodes was, you know, your your ball that is your work is made of rubber and it bounces. It'll bounce off the ground and and back and and you can recover. But your family, your fitness, your health, all that stuff are made of glass balls. If you drop those, they shatter, right? Mm -hmm. So I just think it's funny that the juggling analogy was used a couple different times in different ways. Yeah. Okay. Almost in a counter, like a counterintuitive fa fashion. <laughs> yeah. And it, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a hard concept to really explain as far as like, yeah, there's only so many it, ways it into practice can be really mm -hmm. difficult. And he talks a lot about that. It has to just be a habit where, you can't one thing, everything in your life right off the bat. You got to focus on what's the most important thing in, in your life. What is the one thing I can do to help using, my finances yeah. or whatever it using is. Using the discipline to develop a powerful, one powerful habit mm -hmm. at a time. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they emphasize you can only develop one at a time. Yeah. And the glass around our family and health, those are things that we never get back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, so those are glass balls. How do, how do we focus on priority of that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. at a high level. Yeah. Something we talked about last um, episode too, was that this kind of is in line with why we started the podcast. Cause we wanted to show people that there's more than just, you know, working a nine to five job until you're 65 and then retiring and then hoping you can spend time with your family. But by then your kids are grown, maybe your parents are deceased, maybe your spouse is sick or something like that. But by using the one thing to achieve extraordinary results, we can do that quicker in life and really get back to the things that focus with that counterbalance. I so, hear you. 
Yeah. The big, the big thing is as soon as like Brixton's lacrosse game or schedule comes out, that is in my schedule, Mm -hmm. like family vacation. Those are in my schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how we make sure that we're counterbalancing all of that thing is what end of day. My one thing is, is my kid, Mm -hmm. you know, we can go rebuild a business. We can go redo some of these things yet. Can't, we can't Can't get the time back, the time back, you know, he uses an example in the book about that where, the guy worked his basically self almost to death. And by the time he's ready to enjoy and spend time with his family, they're all grown up. You know, all the opportunities are missed. You know, the, the five-year-old birthday parties, all that stuff. You got to take time and, and nurture those as, as it comes by. You can't just neglect everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, I think some people will find these concepts a little counterintuitive because we're talking about taking things to extreme focus on your, on your work or your, whatever your goal is, whatever your one thing is, but at the same time trying to balance it all out, which again, true life balance, we they say in the book is, is, a, is a, yeah. an illusion, but you still have to, you have to maintain, you have to nurture and you have to take care of all aspects of your life. You mm-hmm. can't just neglect everything and mm-hmm. expect things to work out. Yeah. And I think it's, as we've kind of already said, it's something you have to continue to work on. One of his other lies is um, that we're just inherently disciplined and that Mm. discipline is what achieves success. So, you know, it's really not about discipline. It is developing a habit. So maybe having that initial discipline to do the habit or to do the thing enough until it becomes a Mustering enough discipline to put forth the effort to develop the habit. Yeah. Like uh, we were talking before, um, a disciplined life is is basically an illusion as well. People that we look at as uh, living a disciplined life basically just have a handful of really powerful habits that they accomplish easily because you know they're you know we we talked about that before is habits once you develop them they become easy, mm-hmm. yeah. and they're focused on those, yeah. You know, to where sometimes you, in even looking in you might look at someone and be like oh my goodness they must be so time blocked and mm-hmm. so exactly. amazing and truly. They might not be. You yeah. Know? So what are we putting out as a persona versus what's actually happening in real life? Yeah. Or they've just worked on, because he talks about it in the book, they've worked on that one thing. And because they've worked on that one thing for so long, it's become a habit. So it makes them look very disciplined. But it's not like all of a sudden they just woke up one day and they're like, I'm going to do this every day now. They worked hard. And I think one thing I love so much about what you do with working with agents and coaching is that you help us develop that discipline because we're accountable to, you you know, Checking in on the one three fives and the four one ones and what's your one thing and blah blah blah. If I have to tell someone what that stuff is, like I'm gonna hold myself accountable to doing it. So mm. that's one of the great things about having a coach and a mentor. Yeah, that's a good point. I've always learned that, or I've figured out in life that teach sometimes teaching is the best way to to learn something. Mm-hmm. So you know, by holding yourself accountable, by you know, like you're teaching it to someone else or you're trying to uh, push a concept onto someone. Or even doing this podcast, we've talked about this before too. Exactly. Like this, this is not all about just you know t- teaching people or making them aware of this book. But mm-hmm. we're learning in the process too. We're holding ourselves accountable to, yeah. to read these books and to implement the concepts within them. So it's 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 yep. pretty pretty cool concept. I love it. So this is not a question I gave you beforehand. So you may have to give it a little bit. Of thought, <laughs> but what is what's kind of next for you? Um, You know, do you have some goals that you wrote out this year? um, Something that helps you achieve your one thing that maybe is, you know, doesn't have to do with owning another brokerage or coaching or anything like that that's on the horizon? So a lot of my goals, and this is kind of, I don't know if it's silly yet, I've been so hyper-focused of being the best mom possible. Mm -hmm. Brixton only has two years left in high school. And then I've said no to a couple opportunities in the past of, and I'm like, okay, so, and I, my kid doesn't just go away. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Typically they go out of your house and off to college that I feel that I'll have some, some different time back of, um, I don't, I, there's so many things that I have that I'm like, okay, and it's brokerage ownership of like, what do I want to look at in Florida? That's one of my places of, I would love to be there. Yeah. You know, six months of the year and then here. And what, mm. what does that look like of mm-hmm. now not having my kiddo in school at the house? Yeah. Still like, that's my one every day. Like, I don't want him to get his driver's license yet. I'm so excited mm-hmm. for him to get <laughs> right. his driver's license, but that is mine and his time of dropping him off to school. 
you know, so that one is I'm very accountable to what if people want to make a phone. Hey, can we talk first thing in the morning? I'm like, nope. Yeah. I, I can call you at 807. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I can do this. Yeah. So I'm excited. I don't want him to like that's that mama yep. thing, but I'm kind of really, I'm excited of what after the next two years looks like of being less hundred percent tied into Colorado Springs. Sure. I like your concept of going to Florida too. Yeah. You do. Right. Yeah. It's been a long, cold winter the here. Winter was hard this year. It yeah. was. Well, I'm excited to see what you can accomplish with like Brixton becoming an adult that doesn't need, you know, a mom 24 seven, like, cause what you've already achieved in the last 16 years is amazing. So without him in the house, like I'm ready to see what else you achieve. It's going to be amazing. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that about wraps it up. Do you have anything you want to add Jamie or anything Casey that you wanted to talk about with the book? I just want to thank you and appreciate your time. And I yeah. think you all are doing great things with this podcast and keep it up. Thanks. Yeah. We love it just yeah, even for ourselves. <laughs> um, if anyone wants to, you know, follow what you're doing or get a hold of you, um, like where can they find you on social media or best? So way? my best, I'll give out my cell phone, 719-649-6271. My That's best is actually sending me a text and want to, hey, here's a one, two, three. Yeah. No, perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just know that she'll time block when she's going to you. <laughs> yes. um, just Casey Clark on Facebook. and Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Jamie, you want to take us out? Sure thing. So if you liked what you heard today, please help us grow the channel by uh, leaving us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like, share, leave a comment if you've seen or heard anything today that you want to uh, chime in to the team. And um, if you're interested in finding out more about the A team, yep. uh, you can find us on uh, the A team. Uh, dot homes. It's just A team. A team. A team. Dot homes. Yeah, know that on spot <laughs> on Instagram yep. and Facebook. Yep. Um, as always, thanks everybody for tuning in. Yep. See you later. Bye. Bye.